Hello and welcome! This time we're going to talk about program languages. Last video uh, we talked about that our processors, yeah, our cores in our computers do understand just a subset or a set of instructions, an instruction set. Yeah? Specific processor-specific instruction sets there are. Yeah? This means our programs are processor-specific. We cannot let a program which is compiled for an Intel processor run on a Motorola processor. It's not working. Because these instruction sets are unique. Now we're going to talk about how we can compile, how we can produce such programs. I show you something. I show you something on my computer here. Uh, here, this is the directory of, I chose the Mozilla Firefox, yeah? and this here is the exe, the executable file in Windows, it's called the exe file, so this is the program, yeah? and if I open it with a text editor, it looks like this, yeah? we cannot read anything, anything at all. However, here with this specific view, I can change to a hexadecimal view. And here, here we see all the call content of this program as byte content. So the first byte is 4D. First byte is 4D, which means something. I don't know. Second byte is 5A. And this is the program, this will be fed into our CPU and this is in the end doing what Firefox is doing. So it's just a series of bits. Some are interpreted as operational codes, as commands, machine commands, some are interpreted as operands and yeah, and this is a sequence now of all, probably not all, but a lot of uh, machine commands of my CPU. That's it. Yeah? How to compile this? How to compile this? So, in ancient times, com for computer age, yeah? in ancient times, they did it simply by writing the command word in the command register. Yeah? So there was in the, inside the CPU yeah? the control unit actually yeah? there was the command register yeah? showing the command and they simply wrote it in by hand. Yeah? They wrote the corresponding bits in this command register there are then operand registers and so on and they wrote in the operands and then execute the command. If the command was executed, write in the next. Okay, this was actually done. I mean, you see, it's not that easy. Yeah, because I mean, you type in one zero zero one one and one zero zero. Ah, mistyped! I wanted to one zero zero one one zero 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 one. From the start, from the beginning. <laughs> so that's what it is. Yeah? And then the control uh, units got the possibility to load the program from uh, stripes, yeah? Lochkarten. Which is called in English. Lochkarte. Now we'll put it here. Yeah. To load it from there, then you just have to make little holes in cards so it could be read by some mechanics and will write one command after the other. Yeah. And now we know our control unit is able to fetch commands from a memory, yeah. put the address of the command on the on the address bus, receive on the data bus, the new command and so on. Yeah. 
we talked about this in principle. How it's working in detail? Computer science. Yeah? We are just watching now how this is working. So we can, we have now the benefit yeah, that we can put our program in the memory. So basically, I could simply open a file yeah, and program there something, yeah, file. This will be loaded in the, in the memory and I can program. Yeah. For instance, I can program with some editor, the bit, uh, the, the, the byte, one, zero, I have to look a little bit. One, one, zero, 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 zero. Yeah. The next byte, I could write in one, zero, zero, ah, zero, one, one. <laughs> you know, inverse logic. Yeah. <laughs> zero, 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 one. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. I could write it like this, but I would get crazy. So I could basically also use a hex editor, hexadecimal editor, and just write here. This is a this is a B. This is zero, of course, and this here is a six. This is a one. This is in hex. So this is this here is is binary binary format and this is hex format. If I know all the commands, the bit patterns of all the commands and then some operands, yeah, I know that this is a command because I looked it up, yeah, because I don't know it by the top of my head of course, and I know this is one operand of this. Yeah. So this is the command and this is the operand. Yeah. I can write it binary, of course we are using hexadecimal editor and write it in. Yeah was done, was really done. However, it's really, really dangerous or easy to make mistakes. Yeah? And it takes ages to write simple commands. Yeah? So they used something then which was called assembler, yeah? which was just names, giving those machine commands, these machine codes, names. Yeah? In this case, yeah? assembler. In this case, this is a move, what we call move, and to the AL register. So one register to the lower part of the register of the memory inside the, inside the CPU. What this means exactly doesn't really matter. This basically means I want to move something into a memory place in the in the CPU. And what I want to move? I want to move 61H, yeah, hexadecimal. There is also a comma in between. This is the same command like this, but this is much more readable. Yeah? This is assembler code. And I can now write a lot of commands after each other and it will produce this binary sequence. Yeah? And this binary sequence in the end is in the file we have seen. This is basically how a program is working. And this assembler coding, this is also still done. Not very often, but it's still done. Why? Why? Tell you why. Because code which is produced by a experienced programmer in assembler performance like you've never seen before cannot be more performant yeah? there is no, no code line in which should not be there yeah? this is the benefit of coding in machine code yeah? this is also called machine code even if it's not really machine code but assembler language is also referred to as machine code Maschinensprache uh, performance by line of code is top. Like this, yeah? However, even small programs are long yeah? 
and it, you know it's not structured it's really hard to read you have a sequence of little tiny steps yeah? uh, if is some commands long yeah? because we have to load two operands we have to compare them and based on the comparison we have to jump somewhere okay so uh the idea was then to 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 let this code this machine code this assembler code this machine code generate yeah? this was then done by the higher programming languages yeah? higher programming languages they have a certain syntax so a certain way but this is far much far away from this like like this <laughs> it's it's far away simply yeah? however it's easier for us to understand we can combine some typical elements like i said an if statement or a loops loops and so on we can easily program them and we can easily read them yeah? however machine is not understanding what we're writing yeah? so we need something in between yeah? I'll show you what i mean basically basically we are producing a so-called source file source file this is usually a text file where we write in our code if we're using a, a specific programming language then we write in the specific programming language okay therefore we're using a text editor text editor text editor or program editor yeah? this is producing the source file yeah? now we have the source file what to do yeah? two possibilities we can either use a so-called compiler compiler a little bit too small eh? so the source file can be fed into a compiler the compiler is then browsing through the source file we'll talk about this how this is happening browsing through the source file and is producing machine code out of it eh? so here we end up with machine code So this is basically such a file we have seen just on the computer, exe file in Windows, executable file. This is produced by the compiler somehow. Yeah? By a compiler understands the source file yeah? and is compiling it for a specific machine, yeah? for a specific processor into the machine code. So if I have the same source file and have a different compiler, I compile the same program for a different for a different machine, for a different processor, would work. And then there's the possibility of a so-called just-in-time compiler or interpreter. Interpreter, which is directly reading a source file and is giving out machine code and on the fly just in time during program execution okay and these things either this is loaded into the cpu eh, or this eh. if i'm using or this is also called a uh, just in time JIT compiler JIT compiler This is how this is working. Usually we have a text editor, we're producing a source file. Very often, still very often, we're producing from the source file machine code. And the machine code is then executed on the CPU when they start the program. I cannot, that's it. Or we have a source file, use an interpreter or a just-in-time compiler, and this is then 
during runtime. This is before runtime, really a file which I can distribute or copy to somewhere else is produced. And this is during runtime of the program. Yeah? When I start the program, the uh, just-in-time compiler then is producing its, its, its commands to the CPU. Both things have particular advantages and disadvantages. There are maybe some steps in between. Yeah? We will discuss this. Yeah? What are the possibilities? This is actually how, how programming is working. Yeah? We do have several steps there. Yeah? And if those steps are integrated into one program to program some platform. Yeah? This is called uh, this is called integrated development environment. Yeah? So an integrated development environment usually has some text editor, some possibility to store a source file, more or less sophisticated, some compiler built in, and this is then producing machine code. Yeah? If this is all covered by one software package, this is called an integrated development environment. If you're using different software packages, yeah, then you're using different software packages depending on what system you are programming. This or that is used. Meanwhile, most of the programming is done with integrated uh, development environments, of course. Yeah, that's it. This is how we get from a certain source file, from a certain program in a certain program language to machine code, to an executable program for a specific processor. Next time we are talking about these compilers and the possibilities which we are having here in this area. Yeah? We we'll see, go a little bit into details, not too far, yeah? but a little bit into details because there are pre-compilers, pre-processors, ah, what is this, and so on. Uh, and what is the benefit? We'll cover this in the next video. Yeah? For this video, thank you very much for listening. And one zero zero one one zero zero one goodbye.